So when you are being trafficked or abused, you think that that person can read your mind. In fact, you give them all the power of who you are. And that leads you into all kinds of really dangerous relationships as an adult. Hey friends, and welcome back to Conversations with Jewish Believers in Jesus. We're back with Liz Nolan, former psychotherapist and new ager of 32 years. She left all of this to become a champion for helping abused women and loves to share about the important role of women in the Bible. Hey Liz, I've really been enjoying this conversation. Thank you so much for being here. My pleasure. Yeah, it's, it's really deep and, and moving. Um, we're now going to get into a topic that absolutely breaks my heart. And it, it baffles me that this is actually something that exists in the world. And that is female sex trafficking. I, I remember being on the road uh, on a road trip one day. Um, I went into an in and out um, restaurant and I saw on the counter there one of those um, uh, donation or charity boxes. And it was raising funds to help stop sex trafficking of women. And I just stopped in my tracks and I'm like, is this an actual thing? This is a real thing in the world. And it just it just completely boggled my mind. Can you talk about this topic and your role sure. in helping women that have been sexually abused? Yes, absolutely. So um, my work has always been in trauma and sexual abuse recovery, even before becoming a believer. So I have my 35 career, a 35 year career as a as a therapist for women that have been sexually abused. When I got saved, um, because I had merged my two practices, being a new age practice and my sexual trauma practice, I closed everything down because I needed to understand what I was doing and make sure I wasn't leading people in any way in the wrong direction. Okay. After a couple of years of being a follower, the Lord really led me to start um, getting back into helping women that were sexually abused, I didn't know I would end up in the sex trafficking aspect of that. And so I got drawn into a, uh, we have actually a local recovery home for domestic sex trafficking survivors, women from the ages 18 to 35. And I was just going to volunteer there. And they had me sort of teaching a class. Little by little, I became the therapist and then the clinical director. So I wrote a program for these women to um, introduce to them the concepts of how you recover from trauma and what does Christ and the Bible have to say about that. So I Mm. did a biblically focused program for them, understanding now as a therapist that was now a believer that there is no healing without the Lord and that what Mm. I had done, what was so miraculous is when I got saved, I was like, I wasted my whole life. What did I do? Like, did I help anybody? Right. Well, God used every single morsel of my clinical background in this ministry for 20 months because I had good clinical judgment. I understood what was happening psychiatrically and psychologically. I understood the dynamics of trauma but I can now bring in a biblical worldview. Fortunately, in a, it was a Christian ministry, so I was allowed to do that. I would not have been able to do that if it wasn't. So it really changed how I looked at trauma, and it really challenged me, but it was also an understanding that God was working the whole time. Um, God yeah. knows the end from the beginning, so he you, I almost felt like I... Pre- I was being prepared for that ministry through all those years, if that makes sense. It does. It does. One thing that I like to um, to to mention sometimes is 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 you know how these, and we're going to talk about this in the next episode, which is which I can't wait. Um, is about positive affirmations and the mantras that are going around in the world today. These new age mantras. You know, yeah. if you believe it and, and conceive it, you can achieve it. Uh, yeah. You know, think positively. You know, good vibes bring good things. You know, yeah. and all these. Yeah. All these uh, slogans that people use today, yeah. and I and I and and from this perspective on this side of the cross, I, I, I say 
could you tell that to someone who has been sex trafficked and completely and horribly abused? And would that help them? Absolutely. You know? Absolutely not. It's like putting a Band-Aid on, first of all. How do you yeah. tell someone who's been trafficked for their whole childhood to think positive? Exactly. And it'll all be fine. Because then what they do is they self-blame. Well, I guess I wasn't thinking right back then. If if my thoughts right. create my reality, yes. Yeah, so you're you're really furthering their shame with those slogans and those right. ideas. Right. And what I love about the last video we did is that I would bring up the Bible stories of like the Samaritan woman I'd mentioned in that video, Rahab. Was Rahab, yeah. Prostitute Mary Magdalene. She was a prostitute. Didn't have yep. the greatest background, the woman caught in adultery. God came to these women. He came for them. So I would say he came for you. He's coming mm. for you. And I have my own background, you know. So, you know, I was always very transparent. I had uh, some sexual trauma in my childhood. And, you know, I understood them deeply. And I also understood how when you do have that sexual trauma, you then become very vulnerable. Because when you are being trafficked, or abused, you think that that person can read your mind. In fact, you give them all the power of who you are. And that leads you into all kinds of really dangerous relationships as an adult. And mm. so in understanding and taking those qualities away from a person and putting them to God, meaning if God is the only one who really knows you and restoring that relationship, it can be a great source of healing. And there's still some damage to deal with with the women. Of course. Like, Didn't God protect me? And that's when you get into much deeper discussions about what, what does God allow and what does it mean to be in a fallen world and what, how is he redeeming you now? Right. And what the ultimate, the ultimate goal is with regards yes. to our, our future. Correct. The hope we have because these lives are ruined. Yes, it These does seem that way. But if he can deliver a sinner like me and you and exactly. all the many testimonies I've heard of criminals and um, people who have had all types of, of trauma, he he's come for us. He's come yeah. for the sinners and he's come for the people that have had the hardest backgrounds. And just because bad things happen to you doesn't mean God was not present. He doesn't always stop everything. Obviously, that's the whole idea. He wants us to have a relationship with him. And then he walks with us and helps us to understand how our difficult backgrounds have given us the ability to appreciate the salvation he's giving us. So it really is yeah. the weaker we are, the stronger we, we are. And most of the times, those of us with difficult backgrounds appreciate him much more because uh -huh. of well said. Um, there are women that are watching this right now that are hurting. And, and I just want to say that you don't have to have gone through sex trafficking or have been sexually <laughs> abused to be suffering. Um, some, some women suffer from anxiety. Some men, <laughs> like myself, uh, yeah. have suffered from anxiety. Yeah. And, uh, and what would you tell anyone that's watching right now that, that might be going through some sort of emotional uh, struggle? I would tell any woman watching going through an emotional struggle that it is true that when we have emotional difficulties, it can sort of define the beginning of, and end of who we are and what we feel. But like there is someone there who can deliver you even from the hardest emotional moments. And if you will just open your heart to the idea that there is a savior whose name is Yeshua, Jesus, mm. that wants a relationship with you and wants to walk you through each one of these emotional chapters. Will it fix every emotion in your life? No, but it will fix you at the spiritual level and then mm. help you to cope with emotions in a very different way. We are not taught in the secular world anything except using our own strength. You're not going to find peace in your own strength with your emotional difficulties. It only comes through Christ. Mm. Wow. Uh, I'm just going to just give a little hallelujah right there. <laughs> okay.
Wow. Um, thank you so much for sharing that. You touched my heart, um, made me all emotional and stuff. <laughs> thank you for that. And thank you for all the work that you've done uh, in helping in helping these women. And, um, and if you're out there and you're watching this, um, there is uh, Liz's contact information down below if you'd like to reach out and talk with her as well. So thank you, Liz, once again. Yes, thank you as well. In our next episode and final episode with Liz Nolan, we will be discussing the ever so tempting and alluring new age mottos and sound bites and how they go against biblical teaching. You won't want to miss out. If you like these kind of conversations and want to see more, hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. And please share these videos with everyone you know. If you'd like to visit our website, go to jewsforjesus.org or click the link in the description below. You can also chat with us live and anonymously. And also, don't forget to follow us on Facebook and Instagram. Links are also in the description. And may you all find peace and hope and joy in our Messiah, Yeshua. <laughs>